Good morning, Peace Chapel. Hope everybody's doing well today. For those of you guys who don't know, I am Nate Harris. I'm your communication director here at Peace Chapel. And every Sunday, I come up here and I let you guys know about everything that's going on here at Peace Chapel. Obviously, things are in a different space right now. The world is closed, but we are not closing our doors here at Peace Chapel. I know we're online. We're not connected in the same way, but we are still connected to the kingdom of God. But we are a community church here at Peace Chapel. We're not here just to give you a service or just to put Bible verses down your throat. We're here to be a community development. We want to actually help people and things that are going on in the community. So we have put together an initiative. We have partnered with all the community partners here on the east side of Los Angeles, California, and we are prepared to serve 500 meals every single day for the next two weeks. At 7622 South Avalon Boulevard, we will be passing out meals so the people who need them the most, people who may be sick, who have kids, who have mothers who, who can't take care of their kids in this time. Jobs are stopping, the world is stopping, but we will not. So if you have anyone who needs food, they need help, they need supplies, let them know that every single day for the next two weeks, starting Monday, March 23rd, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., you can come and you can get a free meal. We're partnering up with all the partners in the area and it's gonna be absolutely epic. So if you know someone, please let them know about this. Also, I want to let you guys know, I know you want to give. I'm someone who loves to give now, okay? I used to hate giving to churches, but I love giving now. So I don't want to go a week without giving. So I understand a lot of you may be nervous by giving online, putting your credit card information online, but we have prepared a way for you guys. In the comment box below, all you have to do is click on the link that says the Tidely app. Once you click on that link, it will lead you to a page where you can set up and create an account. Click on create an account and it will lead you to a page where you put in all your personal information, your name, um, your credit card information, your security codes, all of that good stuff and it will walk you through the steps. After you put that in, you have a couple options that you can choose from. You can choose to donate $5, $2, $1, $100. You can set up reoccurring payments, monthly payments, bi-weekly payments. The limitations for this app, there's none there. So if you're interested in giving this week, I understand it's a different situation that's going on, click the link below, it will guide you through the instructions. If you have any questions, please reach out to any leaders here at Peace Chapel, Pastor Fitz, myself, Pastor Juan, Pastor Drew, and we can help and walk you guys through this process. Amen? Amen. Well, hello, Peace Chapel family and friends. This is DeAntoine Fitz live here at Peace Chapel, getting ready to kick off our second week of online-only services. Before we get started, I want to give thanks to a couple of people. First, our newly formed media team. Wow, Peace Chapel, you have no idea what God did in putting this team together. Without them, we would not be able to pull off what we're getting ready to pull off. And then, of course, I got to give it up for our worship team. Our worship team, you guys know our worship team brings it every single Sunday. They've gotten real creative because of what's going on now. Our admin team, who's bringing everything together, just pu pulling all the pieces together. Got to give it up to our admin team. And definitely, Peace Chapel, I'm grateful to you and I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that you joined us. I'm grateful that you made it a priority to worship together even though it's online. So listen, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to not just watch but to participate. As we sing, I want you to sing along. As you listen to the message, take notes. If you feel like saying amen, type it in the comment section. Praise the Lord, type it in the comment section. If you feel like shouting, shout. And when it's time to give, I want to encourage you to give electronically. Now, even though we're worshiping in separate places, we're doing this together. And so since that, as you're singing, as you're worshiping, as you're listening to the message, you're doing it together with your Peace Chapel family. So let's join our worship team right now.
Abre mis ojos, Señor, yo quiero verte, yo quiero verte. Abre mis ojos, abre mis ojos, oh Cristo, abre mis ojos, Señor, yo quiero verte, yo quiero verte.
right, how about that? Can we give it up even digitally online for our worship team led by the talented and gifted Sean Brazil, also known as Sean B., founder of WorshipJunkieRadio.com. If you guys have not downloaded that app, you need to download that app. I'm telling you, I jam to that when I'm taking a shower. I jam to that when I'm driving down the street. I jam to that when I'm just ready to worship. You guys need to download that app and support our brother. You will not be disappointed. Peace Chapel. I miss y'all big time. I'm telling you, I miss y'all. I mean, this just feels so different to not have you guys here worshiping with me today. I love being able to look over to the left and see people over there engaged in the message and look down the center and see people engaged in the message and look over to the right and the bogans all the way in the back engaged in the message. But we, we, we can't do that today. We are living in an unprecedented time for sure. There's fear all over the world. And unquestionably, the most talked about subject on social media, on the news, or in your personal conversations is how do we stop the spread of COVID-19? Now, because of the rapid spread of this virus and the order issued by the governor of California, we've moved our services to online only. And so as you can see from what's been taking place over the past few weeks, change is the new normal. In times like these, we must embrace the moment and recognize that even when we can't meet physically, we can meet digitally because God's message must continue to spread. By all means, God's message must continue to spread. Peace Chapel, you would be extremely proud of your leaders. They are committed, more committed now than ever before. People coming together to do what it takes to pull off this worship service. Because you guys have heard me say this before. We will do anything short of sin to get the message out. However, we're getting the message out in very difficult times. We know that this virus is incredibly contagious. The positive test result of Utah Jazz player Rudy Gobert prompted the NBA to shut down immediately and indefinitely. And for some people, that's when it got real because you don't, you don't mess with our basketball. We love our basketball. But I remember I was, I was in Vegas when I got the news. And then shortly after, it was reported that his teammate, Donovan Mitchell, was also infected. And since then, several NBA players, executives, and staff have tested positive, including two Laker players. That's just how contagious this virus is. But there's something more contagious than this virus. Fear. Fear is more contagious than this virus. This virus is incredibly contagious, but so is fear. And there are a lot of reasons for people to be afraid today. It's hard to predict how much damage this virus will do to our economy. Schools are closing, businesses are shutting down, and then there's a shortage of toilet paper. Now, I really don't get the toilet paper thing. I, I, I just don't understand what's going on with the toilet paper. I've talked to several people, and nobody can answer correctly for me what is going on with the toilet paper. But I do know that when you travel down the aisles in the grocery stores and at Walmart, there are no, there's no toilet paper. And it's because people are afraid. And when you're afraid, you do irrational things. So it's fear that's controlling people at this point in time. It's, it's fear that is spreading, and, and fear is contagious. And the media, 
They're doing their fair share of fanning, fanning the flames of fear. In fact, the night the news broke about Rudy Gobert, there was a picture that was surfacing all throughout the internet, all throughout media outlets. And I want to show you guys this picture. Now, what's interesting about this picture is that Rudy Gobert was not even on the court when it was announced. But they found a picture that showed him choking as if he was dying on the court because that's what helps to spread fear throughout the land. Fear is contagious. But I want to remind those who are followers of Jesus Christ. I want to remind Christians of the words of the Apostle Paul to his protege, Timothy. He said this in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. He says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. Notice he refers to fear as a spirit. He says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That there is a spirit that God gives to his people that produces power, love, and a sound mind. That's what we need now more than ever. We need a sound mind. People are out of their mind. And I understand the panic. I, I, I get it. I mean, we've never seen anything like this before. But for believers... We need to understand that fear is a spirit, and it does not come from God. And if it does not come from God, we don't want it. Jesus said something similar in John chapter 14. He said, my peace I leave with you. He says, I give my peace to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. In other words, this is not regular peace, kumbaya, that the world talks about. This is a different type of peace. This is a divine peace. It's coming from Jesus. He says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. And then he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Because there's something about bad news that troubles the heart. And what's going on right now is bad news. He says, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Fear is contagious. But fear is not the only thing that's contagious. If you checked out, I need you to check back in because I really need you to wrap your mind around this. I titled the message, You Are Contagious, because fear is not the only thing that's contagious. You are contagious. Now, as we look around, we see that some people, they're not taking this thing seriously. You got pictures surfacing of young people on the beach acting like people are not dying from this virus. I mean, people are dying from this virus. This is a very serious virus. In fact, just the other day, 200 people in the United States died from this virus. And then they interviewed one of the young people. And he said something that was crazy to me. He says, if I get it, I get it. If I get the coronavirus, I get it. And I understand, look, there are some people that can live. In fact, the majority of the people, if you got this virus, you would, you'd be able to live through it. But the problem is you can pass it on to other people. And that's what's going on. People are getting the virus, and they can live with it. In fact, when Donovan Mitchell was tested positive, one of the things that he said that scared him the most was that he had no symptoms. And so it's not necessarily you and what it can do to you, but it's about you passing it on to other people. We have to be considerate. When I was in Vegas and the news broke, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down and I'm getting ready to eat, and a guy comes and, and, and sits right next to me and coughs without covering his mouth. If I wasn't a Christian, I'd have gave him a two-piece. 
The nerve of you to come and cough without covering your mouth. Even if this virus wasn't going around, you're supposed to cover your mouth when you cough. So we have to show some consideration because this virus is contagious. Now listen, wherever you are, wherever you're watching, I want you to understand this and I want you to embrace this truth. You are contagious. You are carrying something. We're all carrying something. But the question is, and this is a very important question, I need you to tune back in. We're watching at home so we get distracted. I need you to tune back in. The question is, is what you're carrying worth spreading? That's the question. We're all carrying something. And whatever we carry, we pass on to people that are around us. But is what you're carrying worth spreading? Some people are carrying fear. And the people that are around you, they catch that, right? You've been around people that are afraid and you can feel it. You can feel the energy, right? And that's what's happening. They're passing that fear along to other people. But if we're filled with faith, and that's what God has called for believers to be filled with, if we're filled with faith, the people that are around us will catch that as well. Now, I want to share a portion of Scripture with you guys written by the Apostle Paul. It's in the New Testament. And he's writing to the church in Thessalonica. They were very afraid. They were facing all sorts of threats and trials, similar to us. It wasn't a virus, but their lives were on the line. And Paul writes this letter to them, and here's what he says in this letter. This is very, very powerful. You don't get anything else that I say. You got to pay attention to the Word of God. He says this in chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians, verse 2. He says, we always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. See, we need to pray. And I was talking to some people the other day, and I said, one thing that's happening as a result of this virus is people are praying. People who've never prayed before are praying. And Paul says that we thank God for you when we pray. We pray consistently. We pray constantly. We don't stop praying. The Bible says that man shall always pray and pray without ceasing. Paul says we pray constantly for you. And we talked about prayer last week, and we here at Peace Chapel, we want to lead the charge when it comes to prayer because we believe that prayer is the answer. And so we started a prayer call, and it takes place every single day, and people are praying four times a day as a group, and we're encouraging our membership. If you're listening, you can join in with us to pray every day because we believe that God has called for his people to humble themselves and pray seek his face and turn from their wicked ways that the God's call for us to stand in the gap on behalf of the nation and he promised to Israel and I believe there are implications to us even today he promised to Israel that he would hear from heaven he would forgive our sins and he would heal our land And so we need to pray. That's one thing that we can do. We we don't need to come up with these eloquent prayers. You never have to wax eloquent for God. He knows what's going on in your heart, and prayer is about conversing with him to build on the relationship. Paul continues. He says, as we pray to our God and Father about you, this is intercessory prayer, he says, we think of, this is what comes to mind when we think of you. And I want you to think about that as you respond to what's going on in the world with this virus. What comes to people's mind when they think about you? Paul says, here's what comes to mind when we think about you. Your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said faithful work, loving deeds, and enduring hope. 
And they had this. It wasn't because of what was going on around them, because as they looked around them, it was not good. But it was because of their faith in Jesus Christ. See, when you have faith in Jesus Christ, it leads to faithful work. It leads to loving deeds. And it leads to enduring hope. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Three marks of a contagious Christian. Faithful work, loving deeds, and enduring hope. That's what should come to people's minds when they think about followers of Jesus Christ. And so in verse 5, Paul goes on to say, For when we bought you, when we brought you the good news, don't miss that, he says, For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power. He says, we brought you the good news. We weren't just talking about it. There was power behind what we said. It was, it was contagious. It started to spread. You could feel it, and that's what's going on right now. This disease is powerful, and it's spreading, and, and people can feel it. He says, we didn't come just with words. We came with power. And when we're committed to God's will, he will empower us. And so this virus, this virus, beloved, this virus is very, very contagious. Fear is very contagious. But the good news, the good news is contagious. I want you to imagine, if you will, that someone found a cure for COVID-19 or a way to prevent it from spreading. That would be good news. And that good news would spread very, very fast. But I want to tell you about some very, very good news. The kind of news that should make you shout for joy. This isn't good news that kills a virus, but it does cure sickness. It cures spiritual sickness. Jesus didn't come for the righteous, but the unrighteous. He didn't come for healthy people, but unhealthy people. He came for people like you and people like me, people who were broken and in need. <laughs> God didn't just shout his love from heaven, but he showed up on earth. God put on a body and became a man, born of a virgin, perfect in every way. He was a friend of sinners. He befriended prostitutes. He touched lepers. Nobody touches lepers. I'm reminded of a story that I heard the other day about someone passing out in a grocery store. And he was laying there unconscious, and, and people were panicking and telling people to stay away from him because they were afraid that he might have the virus and pass it on to other people. That's the world that we live in today. I'm almost afraid to cough because when I cough, I'm just, I know people are going to think I got the virus. <laughs> but Jesus reached out to people who were rejected, rejected by society, rejected by religious leaders. Have you ever felt like you weren't good enough? Have you ever felt like you let God down? Have you ever felt like you did not measure up? Listen to me. Jesus did not come for perfect people. Jesus didn't come for people who have it all together. He came for people who are messed up like you and like me. He came for people who fall short. He came for sinners. He came for people just like you and me. This is the good news. That we're not made right with God by our own good works or religious effort. We're made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. He was perfect in all his ways. He gave his life on the cross for us. He was there and he was dying in our place. He was the perfect sacrifice. 
But the Bible teaches that he did not stay dead. That's really, 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 really good news. The Bible teaches that three days later, God the Father raised him from the dead so that everyone who calls on the name of Jesus Christ shall be forgiven. You should be saved and and, and change will begin to take place. Not just saved from hell, but saved for a meaningful life here on earth. That's good news. That good news is contagious. People need to hear about that good news. If if you start spreading that good news, change will begin to take place. That we can be made right with God, not by going to church, not by giving our money, and we should do that. Not by trying really, really hard to stop doing bad things, but by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. That's the good news that the Apostle Paul was talking about. And that's the good news that's worth spreading. I hope you understand this, wherever you're watching, that you are contagious. You are spreading something. Is what you're spreading worth catching? Paul goes on to say in verse 8, he says, And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere. He says, the word is ringing out from you to people everywhere. He says, even beyond Macedonia and Achaia, for wherever you go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. It's just like this virus. We heard about it starting in China But it began to cross over into other countries. And that's what Paul is saying. He's saying that what you're doing, your faith in God, it it didn't just stop right there in that particular area. It began to spread and people were talking about your faith everywhere. What if your faith became as contagious as the coronavirus? What if people started talking about your faith as much as they were talking about this virus? When everyone else is spreading fear, followers of Jesus Christ should be spreading hope. Paul said the word was ringing out. Everyone that was around them was catching it. He says the word was ringing out. That's what happens when you get passionate about Jesus. That's what happens when you catch a passion for the good news. It starts to spread. Here are some other examples in the Bible of the good news spreading. Jesus raised a girl from the dead. I mean, can you imagine somebody raising somebody from the dead? Jesus raised this little girl from the dead. That's good news. And Matthew tells us in chapter 9, verse 26, now this, now, now this news, it spread it throughout all that region. And then another time, Jesus was casting out evil spirits, showing his power over the spiritual realm. That's good news. And Mark records for us, news about him spread quickly all over the region of Galilee. It spread it quickly. How quickly can you spread the good news? You see that there are some wonderful things happening here at Peace Chapel. You know that that's good news. We have an opportunity to reach people that we've never reached before. That's good news. How fast, how quickly can you spread that good news? All you have to do is just hit share. All you have to do is just invite people to join in. You can spread this good news really, really fast. I believe God is shaking some things up. He's moved us out of the church and into the community because he wants the good news to spread. Here's another example. When God uses disciples to do a miracle in the book of Acts, that's good news. Luke records for us, so the word of God spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. What would it take for the good news to increase rapidly today? 
the same thing that it took for the Thessalonian church. Faithful work, loving deeds, and enduring hope. You are contagious. You're carrying something. All of us, we're carrying something. But is what you're carrying worth catching? People all over the world are afraid. Some people are wondering if this is the end of the world. You got children wondering, is this, is this the end of the world? People are afraid and they're, they're looking for answers. It doesn't take much for fear to spread uncontrollably. That's the bad news, but here's the good news. Fear is contagious, but so is faith. So is love. So is hope. So here's the application. I'm getting ready to bring this all the way home. Peace, chop, and those who are worshiping with us online for the first time. Here's the application. We must become faith spreaders. And I know things are bad, but we trust God. We must become love givers. Start asking people, is there anything that I can do for you? Can I pray for you? And we must become hope dealers. Listen to me. This will pass. When people get close to us, they will catch what we are carrying. Not because of what's going on around us, but because of who is inside of us. We have the risen Savior living on the inside of us. So the church is no longer meeting in buildings. That breaks my heart. Because I love the interaction with people. I love to come in contact with people. This isolation thing can become a bit much at times. Preaching to a camera feels weird. I don't know when things will change, but what if things never change back to what they used to be? We need to be prepared for that because God's message must continue to go forth. Ministry must continue to happen because the church is not a building. The church is a body. We belong to the body of Christ. We have unbelievable opportunity in front of us. People are afraid. They're more open to the gospel than ever before. And so we're not going to run and hide. Jesus said we need to let our light shine so that men can see our good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. So if we can't gather together physically, we'll gather together digitally. You should be inviting people to join you for church online. Treat it like it's a church. Approach it the same way. Get up in the morning. Wash your face. Don't come worshiping God without washing your face. Brush your teeth. Don't you dare come worshiping God without brushing your teeth. You need to get dressed. Get your family ready for church. Worship with the worship team. When you feel like saying amen, just type it. And you can shout from your home because the church is not a building. It's a body. And it goes wherever you go. Nothing will stop God's word from going forward. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain. God's word will continue to worship, move forward. And so, as I said, I'd rather worship in person. But I believe that God shook some things up. We started to get too comfortable And that's what God will do. He'll shake things up when we start to get too comfortable. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Here's here's what I can guarantee you. Those who are serious about their faith will stand out. Those who are not, they'll shrink back. It's time to get creative. We have leaders who are working constantly to come up with creative ways to do ministry in these changing times. I love this church. I thank God for this church. There's no other church that I'd rather be a part of than this church right here. This is a great time to be a follower of Jesus Christ. This is a great time to be a member of Peace Chapel because we're contagious. People are stepping up to the plate to do whatever needs to be done. 
calling our administrators, saying that they're, they're willing to pay bills. If there, are there any bills that need to be paid? Gathering our seniors on prayer calls because, you know, sometimes seniors are not as technical. But we have people that are gathering together, gathering them together and putting them on prayer calls, distributing food to those who are in need. We are contagious, Peace Chapel. We are digital evangelists. As a church, we will do anything short of sin to spread the good news because we are love givers. Jesus said, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. As they peer in from outside and look into the community, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Not by the way that you hoard toilet paper. They will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. So we're constantly looking for ways to do ministry in these trying times. We're here every day giving out food from four to six. Some people are in a hurry to get things back to normal. Normal was boring. Normal was comfortable. God shook us up. There's a new normal. And the new normal is that we need to live and be prepared for constant change. This is a wake up call for the church. God is tired of a lukewarm church. Our hope is not in the government. And I support our government. I pray for our government. I believe in our government. Our hope is not in our government. It's not in our doctors. I thank God for our doctors who are there on the front line risking their lives to take care of people who are sick. But our hope is not in the doctors. Our hope is the one, the one who spoke all things into being. The one who is all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's ever-present. The one who gives sight to the blind. He opens deaf ears. The one who has the power to raise the dead. That's why I'm a faith spreader. I'm a love giver and I'm a hope dealer. It's because of Jesus, beloved. The name that is above every name. The soon returning, conquering king. King of kings, Lord of lords. Who is Jesus? If you don't know him, he's the door by which people enter. He's the bread that nourishes the soul. He sets the captive free. He strengthens the weak. He protects the vulnerable. He is our provider. He is our comforter. He is our redeemer. He is our rock. He is our sustainer, our assurance. He is our firm foundation, Jesus. He is the shelter from the storm. He is our light when the world is dark. He is a lamb who was slain for the sins of the world, the alpha and the omega. He is the resurrection and the life. That's good news. He's goodness indescribable. His power is incomprehensible. His grace is irresistible. That's good news. At his name, darkness flees. Demons tremble. Death could not defeat him. The grave could not hold him. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's good news. You are. You are contagious. But is what you're spreading worth catching? Fear is contagious, but so is faith. Hate is contagious, but so is love. Worry is contagious, but so is hope. I want to conclude with this. I want to remind you of three marks of a contagious Christian. Faithful work, loving deeds, and enduring hope. What are you spreading? Are you spreading fear? Are you spreading panic? Or are you spreading faith, love, and hope? 
I want to pray for you because I recognize that these are challenging times. And it's easy for me to stand here in front of a camera and tell you not to be afraid, but the truth is there are a lot of things to be afraid about. But one thing that I can tell you is that our God is able. We never need to question whether or not he has the power to heal our land. He definitely has the power to heal our land. We will get through this. I can guarantee you we will get through this. This is not the first virus that's hit the world, and it won't be the last. Our God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. But I understand the anxiety, especially for those of you who don't know Jesus. And so I want to pray for you. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching this broadcast, I want you to bow your heads and I'm going to pray. And I want you to, all the believers everywhere, all the believers who are watching this, I want you to pray in agreement with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that you are mighty. You are mighty to save. You are mighty to save. The earth is yours and everything in it, Lord. You are so powerful that you spoke this universe into existence and you sustain it by the power of your word. There's nothing more powerful than you. There's no obstacle that you can't see us through. This did not catch you by surprise, Lord. You allowed it. And so that means that if you allowed it, you're going to equip us with everything that we need to get through it. It's a wake-up call for some of us. For the church, it's a wake-up call that we need to be about our Father's business. And for those who are not a part of the church, those who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, it's a wake-up call that you need to deal with eternity. What we do with Jesus makes all the difference. And so if you're listening, wherever you're listening at, and you don't know Jesus and the pardoning of your sins. You don't know him as your Lord and Savior. You don't know for sure that if you died, and that's a possibility, you know it's more possible now than ever. You don't know that if you died, you would go and be with Jesus. I want you to pray these words after me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I've sinned. I, I've missed the mark. I fall short of your glory. I'm in need of a Savior. And so I'm opening my heart and welcoming Jesus in. I'm accepting his death on the cross as the full and final payment for all of my sins. I'm making a conscious decision to make him Lord of my life. In his name I pray, amen. Listen, if you, if you made that decision, will you let us know about it? Will you type it in the comment section? Or will you send us a direct message? Because we want to pray for you. We want to come alongside of you. We want to help you to find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Peace, shop. I love you. I don't know when we're going to be able to gather together again. We're planning this thing out to maybe stretch beyond the summer. But one thing I can tell you is we will always be there for you. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each one of us until we meet again. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Hello, Peace Chapel family and friends. This is DeAntoine Fitch checking in with you to let you guys know about some of the things that we're doing in the midst of this coronavirus crisis. As you guys know, things are very challenging for us as a nation. And we as a church want to make sure that we step up to the plate and that we're on the front lines to provide services to people. I'm reminded of the words of our Lord Jesus Christ where he said, the Son of Man did not come to serve, be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And that's what the church is called to do in times like these, 
to serve. And so I want you guys to pray about supporting us. If you're a member of Peace Chapel, you should make giving to our church a priority because you know that we have expenses and we've been there for people. We've helped people to pay their rent. We've helped people to get jobs. We've helped people to pay bills. And now the church wants to make sure that we can continue to be there for people. One of the things that we're doing with the help of one of our community partners, we're here in their warehouse right now, God's Army United Services, is we have a grab and go food giveaway. And so we want you to pray, those who are not part of Peace Chapel, we want you guys to pray about supporting our ministry and helping us to take our message and our ministry throughout the globe. We have our online services. We have a lot of expenses that are associated with us getting that message out. And so we need your support. And so here's how you can support our ministry. You can text the word GIVE to 562-379-5157. That's GIVE, the word GIVE to 562-379-5157. And if you don't feel compelled to give, we ask that you would pray for our ministry because our ministry will continue to be there for those who are in need. God bless you and God keep you in his ever loving care. Hi, I'm Saul with Peace Chapel of California. How many of you are human here? Well, if you are human, I do believe you are, you're going to struggle with being afraid. You can be afraid of being alone, being lost, the fear of something happening to someone you love. Do you know that there are hundreds of things to be afraid of? For example, some people have what is called arachnophobia, a fancy word for fear of spiders. Uh, others have catatrophobia, which is not the fear of cats, but the fear of mirrors. Oh my God. Still, others are afraid of things like chopsticks, numbers. These may sound silly, but for some people, these fears are real. Our Bible tells us 365 times, one for every day of the year, do not fear. When I have fear of the unknown, I read Isaiah 41.10, and it reads, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When I worry about things that may go wrong, I read Philippians 4, 6, and it reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. When I worry about my needs, I read Matthew 6, 25, and it reads, Jesus said, I tell you, do not worry, about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not is not life more important than food and the and the body more important than clothes? For Father God has provided us with his living word. So like the air you breathe, know how much he loves you. God bless you. See you next week.